Hey guys, how's it going? Valley Venture Investing here today. So today we're talking about Apple. Apple just released their Q2 2024 earnings, and this is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, but there's some things in here that I think that a lot of people are not realizing, and maybe one of the reasons we're seeing this thing skyrocket over 6% after hours on seemingly not the best earnings. I didn't have really high expectations going into it. Um, but we'll see if these hold uh, tomorrow. You will probably be watching this by that time. We'll be able to see. Um, but anyway, here uh, an overlook here of the uh, actual earnings and the estimates. Um, this might be one of the reasons revenue was a slight beat. Um, the expectations going into this were not super high. The, you know, the expectation was about ninety point zero one billion. Uh, they beat uh, almost ninety one billion, ninety point seven five billion. Earnings per share, of course, beat estimates as well at $1.53 versus $1.50. Of course, they're doing so, many, so much buyback um, that that obviously is one of the reasons that that's occurring. Uh, we'll get more into that because there's some pretty, pretty big news on that as well. Cash is at $162.34 billion. They are still trying to go net cash neutral. We're going to talk a little bit about that today as well because I saw kind of a, an interesting video uh, on one of the other YouTube channels that was kind of basically kind of talking about the cash usage and really giving Apple a hard time, and it really made me think about it. And, and I want you guys to think about it as well. Uh, so we'll get into that. Uh, in terms of their products here, the iPhone revenue was, uh, this was a this was a sore spot, but there's some definitely some color on this that I'm gonna talk about later. There's a reason for this. We're about five, we're probably about flat. They're saying about 10% year over year drop. Uh, and then they also missed estimates. They were estimating about 46 billion, they 45.96, it was close, right? Um, but we will talk about that. So that's probably another reason the stock's going up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, iPad revenue is also being a little bit of a sore spot for them. Uh, they had missed their $5.56 billion uh, this quarter, but keep in mind, within I think it was next week, they're gonna be having an iPad event and so we'll get into this as well, but the guidance are expecting that uh, we're gonna see some growth in uh, the iPad. Mac, with the new release of the uh, MacBook Air, we saw a pretty significant beat there, 7.45 billion, we've seen it back to kind of growth here versus 6.86 billion expected. And of course, the darling here with huge margins, $23.87 billion uh, they made this quarter. Estimate was 23.27, they can still, as high as they put it, never quite get it right. We're gonna talk a little bit more about services as well. Wearables Home and Accessories also a sore spot, 7.91 versus $8.08 billion expected. So a little bit of green, a little bit of red, um, but overall, not terrible, uh, but not great if you're looking at it in terms of the iPhones specifically, but we'll get a little bit into that. Uh, so before we get into that, I just wanted you guys to take a look at this. Uh, these, of course, are the most valuable companies in the world. Uh, tomorrow, we might see, maybe this week, who knows, we'll see. Maybe Apple take that number one spot again, take it away from Microsoft here. Um, and this is something I want you to keep in mind. Um, when I talk about this other YouTube video I saw and the critiques of Apple in terms of what they're doing with their cash. Um, so we'll get into that. Um, you know, pretty soon they'll be close to a $3 trillion valuation again, I, I suspect, um, but we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, now into a little couple more little details here. Um, net sales, of course, products were down on a year-over-year -year basis, 66 billion uh, versus 73 billion. Uh, services, as we said, are the ones that was an all-time high record, 23.8 billion versus 20.9. Uh, uh, so that gave us the total ag aggregate there, 90 billion versus 94 billion a year ago. So we saw about $4 billion difference there. Regardless, because we saw more of a mix of services, um, well, not, not the cost of services, but the services growing, that is, uh, we saw gross margins actually increase, 42.2 billion versus 41.1, or 41.9 rather. Uh, research and development was up significantly. We've talked about this a lot, so they better be doing something with that. Not the greatest thing that selling general administrative has been going up, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. So that gives us operating income up 27.9 versus $28.3 billion. So not a huge difference. And when we go down to the bottom line, 23.6 versus 24.1, pretty close, uh, but still net income was down on a year over year basis. Uh, earnings per share, $1.53. Um, this, of course, is 
impacted significantly uh, by buybacks, but we're gonna get back more into that as well. Uh, net sales by reportable segment here, I've got X's and uh, pluses here, so you can see you know what was up, what was down. I think this one right here is a mistake. <laughs> in terms of Americas, this was the only one that was up in, term, in terms of the reportable segment. Um, you guys can take a look at all these, but a lot of weakness in China, uh, a lot of weakness in Asia. Um, in terms of net sales by the category, we're going to talk a little bit more about the iPhone, but that's where the miss was, 45.9 billion versus 51 billion a year ago. Mac beat uh, a year ago, it increased iPad decreased, wearables home accessible accessories rather decreased, and of course services uh, increased significantly. Looking at the balance sheet, nothing too uh, exciting. Like I said before, we're about 162.3 billion and we're looking to go net cash neutral. And I think this is where I will interject and I'll talk about their cash usage. I, I won't name this YouTuber, but he's, probably, he's a really well-known YouTuber. And he was talking about basically how Apple is I don't know how else to describe it other than him saying that they were stupid basically stupid for what they're doing with their cash he's saying that they could pay off their uh, debt completely which they could because they have oh I don't have it here but basically I get I get to it here I think we are uh, net cash 58 billion dollars I'll go back to this so you know they could pay off all their debt uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here but Apple also did um, initiate a new buyback program of $110 billion. They could just, you know, pay off their debt, uh, you know, invest that money and take uh, take the interest that they get in that. And it might actually be a better option than just buybacks. But you got to kind of realize what, you know, what what does that mean? What does it mean that Apple's doing that? Apple, like I, the reason I showed you this, is the second biggest company right now in the world. 2.671 trillion. Now I could be wrong, right? I've been wrong before, but a company w w worth this much money with this much talent behind it, can you see them making a mistake like that? They say it explicitly themselves, and it is quite obvious. The only reason they would be doing that is if they felt that their stock was greatly undervalued, which of course these CEOs and CFOs always say but they're kind of putting their money where their mouth is, right? I mean, to put that kind of money behind it when there's other alternatives that they could do, they could even, you know, drive that into product uh, product innovations. You know, it, it makes you wonder, it makes you wonder like, are they actually extremely bullish on the company or are they just making a huge, is this massive company making a huge, a huge mistake? So maybe they know a little bit more coming down the pipe something I kind of wanted to mention uh, because there's a lot of smart people, a lot of financially smart people, uh, obviously that work in Apple and I can't see them making a misstep like that unless they really do believe that their, uh, you know, their, their stock is undervalued, which means, you know, I've always believed it is quite undervalued and I still continue to hold. So anyway, in terms of uh, investing activities, Found one thing I found a little interesting on their statement of cash flows is the purchase of market securities. Just maybe a macroeconomic thing to look at. $25 billion in the last six months. They purchased uh, relative to that same time period last year, about $11 billion. So anyway, interesting. So we went into the conference call. Tim Apple is opening. <laughs> course quite standard talk about them they talked about the countries where they set all-time records because as we went through the other uh, different countries there was you know a lot of areas that were weak uh, talked about all-time revenue records and services and you got to keep in mind that this here this is over 70% margin so again like I said there's always always that re-rating Apple stock factor as well this keeps growing 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 and we'll get into it. it's going to continue growing to grow according to Apple. It's over 70% margin on their services. Um, and this is a huge one here. I think this is the thing, if you guys stuck around, good for you, because this is something that I haven't even seen anywhere, may have been looking in the wrong areas, um, that's so illuminating to this quarter, if this is in fact true. Tim Cook said <clears throat> the March quarter a year ago, they were able to replenish their iPhone channel inventory 
and they had significant pent up demand, and this is due to the pandemic. So this gave them a one pa- uh, one time impact of close to five billion dollars. They mentioned this last quarter as well. Um, and if you excluded this, they would have actually slightly grown. A CFO later in the call said that they were about flat. So I don't know, gum must go somewhere down the middle with that. But that might be another reason that people are paying attention that the stock's actually up, along with the other reasons I'm talking about that I'm going to talk about a bit here and uh, some of the good news along with some of the bad. He also mentioned the exciting product announcement next week. Of course, we know this is the iPad and then WWDC. Um, this is pretty evident. I don't think there's going to be anything too groundbreaking in that, but it was kind of interesting to have them announce that in a conference call. I don't know if I've ever called that before. And as they always say, the install base is at all time highs. In terms of what the CFO said, they have net cash of $58 billion. So net cash being, uh, I want to say take their cash, pay off all their debt, they would be net cash $58 billion. They want to go net cash neutral over time. There's actually a question on this saying, um, would they, uh, once they got net cash neutral, would they change their approach? What would they do? He basically said, we'll evaluate that when we get there. This was the huge news as well. This is historic, actually, largest in history. Uh, Apple's now, the board of directors, has now authorized an additional $110 billion share repurchase. They're also raising the dividend by 4% to $0.25 cents per share. So again, this is going to boost EPS, and this is the controversy that I was talking about before. Is this the proper allocation of this cash? Because Apple has a huge amount of cash. Um, and as people have said before, you know, never bet against Apple. So what are they doing? Is this a huge mistake? Could they have a better utilization of this? I don't know. But I tend to believe that they're making the right uh, the right choice, but time will tell. In terms of the guidance, uh, the June quarter, which would be the next quarter, uh, they expect revenue to grow in the low single digits year over year, so that's good news. Uh, services this is going to grow double digits again. Wow, over 70% margin. Uh, and the iPad revenue is to grow double digits, which isn't surprising considering we're going to have an iPad announcement next week. So that's all pretty much in line. In terms of the questions, I, there wasn't that many that that interest. A lot of questions on China. Um, but specifically, they stated they're extremely optimistic about generative AI. Uh, but Tim Cook alluded to maybe not in the next couple quarters seeing it, but they talked about it a lot. Of course, in the stock market lately, you have to be talking about AI, right? So they plugged those in. Um, but he t- talked about having it throughout the product cycle, but and it's something that you're going to see. But of course, Apple, they're so secretive about everything. So anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, I wasn't really excited about this quarter because... I didn't think it would be anything too spectacular, but this after hours movement is quite interesting, uh, especially with this historic uh, historic buyback program. So let, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.